Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to be going over some more Drupal views. We're going to be talking about fields, how you can add them, how you can change them, and some of the cool stuff you can do. While this is just going to be a basic overview of fields, we'll get into more later in a few coming tutorials for a little bit more advanced functionality. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to use fields, how to add them, and you know, just what you can do. But before we get started, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Michael McMillan, who designed this awesome logo for us. As you can see, uh, we have an actual logo now, which is, which is cool, and Mike did a great job on it. So I would suggest checking out his site, which is uh, michaelpmcmillan.com. You know, he's a real good guy, great, great designer, and he's a very talented developer as well. So with that, let's get started in views. So I'm just going to access my view that we were working on before, which we just called test view. If you have your home page up or wherever you have your view up and you're not in the edit screen, you can always click on the gear and then click edit view and this will take you into your view. So if you notice right here in this column, we have fields and right now it's just content title. If we look down at what's being displayed, it's just our content title. Well, let's spice this up. Let's add something a little bit different here. Right now, we're looking for articles that are published. Well, what other things do these articles have? Let's actually open it up in a new tab, our content types, so we can look at the other content fields that our articles have. So let's go to manage fields. And if you remember, we had a body, we had tags, we had an image, we had an insert image, um, URL path settings, whatever, lots of stuff here. So let's bring in the body. So if we go back to our view, if you want to click add and this button next to your fields, it'll pop up with this menu. We can use the search bar or we can just look. As you can see, content body is right here. So all we have to do is select this. And if you'll notice, it says actually where this content is located in. So if you have any doubts or you have some uh, fields that are named something similar, this is a nice way to say, okay, the content body appears in a page, an article, a project, and a web form. So let's look at one like insert image only is in node article or something like content link, which actually isn't one of your fields. This is the actual link to the specific content that you're pulling in. So there's all sorts of things in here other than just your fields. You know, we have a content link. Um, we can bring in the node ID. If you remember your node is your piece of content, you can bring in new comments, the post date. So let's bring in the post date as well. Uh, just so we have something else here and one more, let's actually bring in the content type just for fun so we can see a couple of different things. And when we click apply all displays, um, you'll notice it'll take us to some other menus. But let me just explain this all displays first. You can have different views that are set up with uh, very similar things. And if you keep adding different blocks or different pages to your same view, it's going to retain all of the fields and the filters. But if you want to change them a little bit, uh, you can change them without changing all of them. So if you'll notice right here when we're adding, it says apply to all displays. So right now if we add this and we had multiple views, it's going to be added to all of them. So let's just click apply now. We'll go over more of the overwriting and stuff like that later. For now, know that just this is going to be able to add to multiple blocks or pages in your view. So we don't want to label. Let's click out of that. I actually don't know, you know, I don't even use label that often. I don't know why that's selected by default, but it is. So that's one of those things you just got to live with with Drupal. And this exclude from display is going to make this field hidden, uh, which can be useful if you're rewriting it or you're using a custom field where you can use replacement patterns to bring this information back in here. So this exclude from display is actually pretty useful. However, I'll go over that in the more advanced section on fields and we just won't worry about that right now. Because this is just our content body, you know, I actually want this to be um, summary or trimmed because I, you know, I don't want all this text in here. So we're actually going to trim this to just 100 just so you can see that it brings it in and then we don't have to worry about all the text. Although I don't remember ever putting in that much text in these examples. So uh, down here we have a couple of more things. We have style settings. So you can customize things. You can customize the label, the, the HTML. You can customize the field, uh, customize label and wrapper in HTML. You can add a default class, um, or by default it adds the default classes, or you can use a, a field template. We're just gonna leave these as default for now. 
In this no results behavior, this is what happens if you have a field that doesn't have any information in it. So uh, by default, hide rewriting if empty. So basically, if there's no content, it's not going to show anything. Although you could have it display something like there is no content or pretty much anything you want. So let's go down here. Uh, let's close this one and let's look at the rewrite results. So rewrite results are sort of some extra things you can do. If you want to rewrite the output of this field, you can check this and it's going to override the output. Um, you can use things like replacement tokens uh, or custom text. It's, you know, it's really useful and I'll get into that more in the advanced section on fields. I just wouldn't worry about that right now. If you want, you can output this field as a link. If you check this, it's going to ask you for the link path. So you could actually set this to link to the content um, if you wanted to. And so that might be useful if you have a title and you wanted to link it to the content, or if you have an image and you want, I mean, basically anything that you want to link is, uh, it's very useful. You can trim this field to a maximum length. We're sort of already doing that with this summary or trimmed. Uh, remove white space. You can convert new lines in HTML to break tags. I'm just going to leave those as is for right now. And then more, you can give this an administrative title, which is sort of nice if you have lots of things. Let's say you're bringing in lots of fields and some of the names are pretty similar. If you give this an administrative title, it's just going to make it easier to manage in your view. So this click sort column, we're not going to worry about this either for right now. So let's just unclick this and we're going to add to all displays. So that was our content body. And now we're going to have to do the same thing for our post date. Um, you know, we'll leave a label for this one just so you can see what happens. It's going to place a colon after it because I like that. The date format, we're going to set it to short format. However, you know, Drupal comes with all of these built in. And in a later lesson, I'll show you how to customize and create your own date formats. But for now, we'll just pick one that's built in. Uh, these will all be the same style settings, no results behavior. We're just going to leave these as is, add to all displays. And then the type, we're also going to keep a uh, label on this one and just click all displays. Okay, so let's check this out. So now, as you can see, there's some sort of broken image in here. We're not going to worry about that right now. I think that's the image that's in the body for our text. Um, it's just probably not showing up in this view. Um, here in the preview, we have our title, we have our body text, we have our post date, and we have our type article. So let's just save this and look at it on the page. Okay, so there's clearly something wrong with this image link. That's no big deal right now. Uh, I'll have to go through and see what's going on there. But as you can see, it's brought in the title, the body text, the post date, and everything. So if we wanted to put this block somewhere else, let's put it in the main content and save this. You can see how this will adapt. Now it's in the main content. You can see you can get started building some really interesting stuff. So once you start styling this content with your CSS, you'll be able to see how absolutely versatile this is. You can pretty much bring in any content and any pieces of those content that you want and just throw it on your page. So that's how you add a field to your view. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about some format things, some pagers, and we'll get back to the advanced functionality of fields after we've gone over some of the more basics of views. That way, once we get into the advanced stuff, it might all sink in a little bit better and make a little bit more sense. Once again, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and thanks for watching.